Today I'm taking a look at Core Space from Battle Systems and giving you my honest review and opinion. You might best know Battle Systems from their range of cardboard terrain, which covers sci-fi, fantasy and urban systems. Core Space, however, is Battle Systems' first step into miniature gaming. Core Space was launched on Kickstarter at the end of 2017 and reached almost £200,000. It's now about to hit retail and what I'm reviewing here is the retail pack that you'll be able to pick up either online or at your local gaming store. The game comes with 20 plastic single piece miniatures, all of the cards, tokens and dice that you need and here's where it raises the bar, a 2 foot by 2 foot neoprene mat and over 90 pieces of terrain to make everything you see here. This truly is a fully playable game in a box and not just a starter set or basics box. What makes it even more interesting is it retails here in the UK for $79.99 RRP and it can be played either solo or as a two player game. So now I have your attention, what's the actual story behind Core Space? The game is set on the border of the Barrens, the desolate region of space around our galaxy's supermassive black hole. The Barrens has become the base for a mysterious alien species known as the Purge. Now the Purge are kidnapping beings for their living biomass and reducing entire worlds to rubble. Amidst this bedlam are the traders, those who work on the borders of the Barrens trying to keep shipping lanes alive and trying their best to scrape a living, all the while living by their code of salvage, trade, adapt and survive. If you think Star Wars smugglers like Han and Chewie, you're on the right track. So what's very interesting is this game isn't just about who kills the most enemies. It's a real strategic, mission oriented game that has an in-depth campaign system and it might see you working together with your opponent until it no longer benefits one of you. Now in this box you get enough minis, cards, tokens and terrain to play a one or two player game. Although with available expansions the game does scale up to six players. Now I've intentionally not gone back and looked at the Kickstarter to see how much it went for then and what you got for your money. As now this is at retail, it needs to be judged on the merit of what's in this box versus the retail cost. Miniatures wise, you get 20 minis made up of 8 traders, which are grey plastic, 9 purge minis in a sandy brown colour, and 3 civilians which are blue. Now this is a nice touch, as if you want to play straight out of the box without painting any of them, it's very easy to see which model is which, and even more helpful, the game includes coloured base clips to be able to distinguish the two trader crews apart during the game. Now that's interesting because whilst there are some predetermined crews to get you up and started, you can build your crew from any of the available traders in the box or in any of the expansions should you de decide to pick some of those up. The tokens and player boards all come on sheets of laminated card, which gives them a quality feel but also allows the use of dry white pens to track upgrades, skills and progression through the campaign. The terrain is highly detailed, it punches out of the sheets clearly and assembles with the included clips very quickly. The scattered terrain and important crates may need a spot of glue just to keep them more robust but this is one time thing and then they can all be put back into the box without taking them to bits again. Now something I've not really seen before are the included plastic player dashboards which hold all of the character stats, the weapons and the skills in for all together and the inclusion of coloured pegs to track health, skill points and ammo are both simple to use but visually very easy to keep track of. The hostility tracker again has a plastic tray which holds the pegs to simulate the mood in the game becoming more hostile which then changes some game effects. If you compare it to the threat tracker for example in The Walking Dead All Out War you'll understand roughly what I mean. Now there's over 100 equipment tokens along with a bag to put them in which has an in-game use and then of course there's the mat. Rather than being a paper mat this is a printed mouse pad type mat which is something I'd usually expect to see as an extra. The basic gameplay is split down into five steps. The first phase is the hostility phase. This sees you increase the hostility tracker by one by placing a black peg into the track and then drawing an event card. You then resolve the text based upon whatever hostility level you're at. The event deck is made up of a number of purge civilian and environment cards and each mission will dictate how many of each of these will go in to make the deck for that mission. Now this means that the event deck will change not only from mission to mission but even between playing the same mission more than once as the cards are selected randomly from the ones available. Next up is the trader phase. 
This is where you activate your characters. Each character has a whole host of actions available to them, such as move, uh, ranged assault, close-up assault, search, reload, and persuade as examples. And your character dashboard will tell you how many actions you can take. Now this is usually two, but it can change through upgrades with some characters. You can also take what are called effortless actions. This is something which your character would easily be able to do during the heat of a battle, like throw something, move a short distance into cover, or use a health stim. Now a lot of time you'll be trying to avoid the purge while searching rooms and looking inside crates which will have random equipment inside. Not only could this equipment be useful, but it may also be valuable should you be able to escape back to your ship with it. Of course you can only carry so much stuff, so you may have to get back to the ship to drop it off and go back and search for more stuff or hand it off to one of your crew. After this is the purge phase. This is an AI controlled phase which sees you rolling purge die to see how many purge enter the building depending upon the level of the hostility tracker. And then you roll a chance die to see where they enter play around the board, one of six places. Next you activate the purge, taking what would be the most aggressive action. There's a really handy flowchart in the rules which explains what to do, but this will become second nature in future games. Again, I'd liken this to how the walkers work in All Out War. After this, there's the NPC or non-player character phase in which you activate the civilians. These are the people trying to go around their business as normal who happen to get caught up in the crossfire. Again, you roll a chance die which will determine the actions of the civilian such as run, hide, trade or even join your crew. Last is the assignment phase which essentially is a mop-up phase to resolve any end of round effects and clean up tokens. So without going into too much detail of how to play the game, what do I think of it and is it a product I'd recommend for you to pick up at retail? Start with the components. I'm really impressed with what comes in the box for the money. The miniatures are very nice sculpts for single piece figures and they're by no means the best quality miniatures I've ever seen. However, they're more than good enough and will paint up very nicely whether you just base coat and wash them or if you want to try something a little higher quality. The terrain actually really impressed me. I'd previously never thought to bother with card terrain as I assumed it wouldn't stand up to long term use and the bright white edges of the card would look terrible. I am happy to be proven wrong here and whilst I'd maybe still run a grey or a black marker along the edges, out of the box it looks great and the quality makes me think it's pretty durable over time. How long will it stay like this? Well I've got no idea really as I've not had it long enough to put to the test. However, my two year old did get a hold of some of this and well, it's still going strong. The artwork on the player cards and the tokens is great and it's quite colourful too, which is a nice change from the usual grim dark sci-fi. The addition of the plastic trays and the pegs is something I didn't expect to see in this set and there's such a lot of thought gone into them, such as holes in the bottom to make it easier to remove the cards. There does appear to be one slight error on them as there's a space where an upgrade can go and it looks like they've been designed to make them easy to remove whilst in play. However, to make them work, the card would have to be upside down. It's a minor thing, but I thought it was only fair to mention. The mat is also a great addition and again, I'd have expected to see this as maybe a paper mat in the set like this, so it's very welcome to see it included. It's also worth noting the box itself as some thought has really gone into storing all of the terrain and components once you pack away, and this is something you rarely see. Gameplay wise, there's a fun game in there. Once you get your head around the rules, it moves along at quite a good pace. And not only is it very story driven and thematic, but there's a really meaty campaign system in there for those that want it. You can of course do one off games, but you'd be missing out on that great campaign. The amount of things that you can upgrade and spend your salvage on is truly amazing. There's some very neat mechanics like how when you fire a weapon for the first time each round, you remove that peg from your ammo track and place it into the hostility track to raise the purge's awareness to you. It's clean and it works well, and also it doesn't get knocked like the threat tracker in All Out War. The game does very much feel like an RPG miniatures game, and the ability to search crates, drop equipment, pick up other stuff, sell the things you find between games to buy better equipment, and level up skills, all feels really well done, and there's a lot of thought gone into this. Rules wise, the book is 105 pages and has all of the info you need to play the game, all of the missions with maps showing you how to build up the terrain and how to set up the mission. Now there's a couple of pages at the back which are quick reference guides. These show the steps you need to take to play through the game and also the page numbers to reference. 
Now these are also available online at Battle Systems download section as PDFs and I strongly recommend you print a couple of these off and keep them handy for your first few games. Now of course no game is perfect and I do have a few negatives. First up, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of symbols to track in this game. The skill classes all have symbols, the weapons and equipment have symbols, the character cards, the purge card, the civilian cards and the hostility tracker all are covered in symbols. This meant I was constantly referring back to the rule book to see what they all meant. Now I assume that this would get better over multiple players, however there is just so many that you will never remember them all and so you'll always need a quick reference sheet handy when playing. I felt that as a core set this could have maybe been limited slightly as an entry point with expansions introducing more sort of symbols along the way but maybe that would have unbalanced things. The character cards, civilian cards and the purge cards are just a little bit busy visually for me. There's a lot of information on them along with all of the symbols that we've talked about however on top of the bright artwork they're not the easiest to see at a glance. Whilst again it's probably something you'll get used to I'd have preferred to see it on the information on a slightly darker or less busy artwork. The biggest problem I have is actually the rulebook itself. I recently made a video about how some games are just very hard to learn to play from the rulebook alone and sadly for me this is one of them. All of the information you need to play is in the book and it's easy to understand however finding it can be quite tough. I don't think I've ever flicked backwards and forwards through a rulebook as much as I have with this one when trying to learn to play a game. As an example, the first mission, which is the one designed to get you started, is on page 48 and page 49. However, there's no explanation on what all of the different things mean to set up the map. If you keep reading to page 65, there's a key which explains what it all means. However, I had assumed that when I got to that part of the book, I had all of the information I need to be able to get in and play. The book is full of descriptions on how to do certain actions, and then it will say, see page 25. And then you read the section and it says, see page 17. So you read that and it says, see page 54. It was quite the effort actually to understand how to set up the game from scratch and how to get playing. Once I was into the game, it flowed pretty smoothly and the quick reference guides I told you to print out really keep you on the right track. However, the layout just feels a little disjointed and I almost gave up at one point. Even the playthroughs online that Battle Systems have done with Beasts of War all start after setup, which doesn't really help you getting started. I only wish the rules had been split into maybe a basic section to get you started and then introduce some of the other stuff later. Instead, I feel like you need to understand everything before you actually get started with your first game. However, all of that said, stick with it. If you're a fan of games like Necromunda, but you want something a little different, or if you love The Walking Dead All at War, but wish it had a, a meaty campaign system, or you're just looking for something that you can use for your sci-fi RPGs, then you'll find this right up your street. I think it's fantastic value for money. There's a lot of thought and time gone into this product and it really does show. I'm sure at some point there'll be a getting started document or maybe Battle Systems will make a how to get started video. They've already made quite a lot of stuff, including a reboxing video. Or if they'd like me to do one, get in touch. Once you get over that initial hurdle, you'll find a fun narrative RPG miniatures game that lets you play it on great looking table without breaking the bank.